Today you join Tommy and I in not so sunny California, but we're here with Volkswagen for the new ID4. And while we're here, Volkswagen rolled out a very special Beetle that they call Benny. And Tommy, who's behind the camera, tell him why this is a special Beetle. Well, this was the exact car that was just featured in that Super Bowl commercial that showcased Volkswagen history here in the US. 75 years of Volkswagen history. This is a 1949 Type 1. And in this video, we're going to show you all around this car and then even take it for a ride, Case. That's right. We actually get to drive the car that was in the Super Bowl ad, which is really cool. But we want to start out by walking around the car and talking a little bit about the history of it. And Tommy is the guy to do that because Tommy's a big Volkswagen guy. I, uh, I do love these Beetles. They're just so special, so simple, and such great cars. Now, post-war production of civilian Beetles started in 1947. And then they arrived here in the States for the first time in 1949, which is the year of this car. So this is a really early Volkswagen as US spec cars go. And it's got some really special features, both on the outside, the inside, and related to the engine that make this thing so special. Yeah, and something that's crazy to me, just looking at cars from a modern perspective, is you walk up to it and see how skinny those <laughs> tires are. It's unbelievable. It's like nothing today. Absolutely tiny case. Now, even though the Volkswagen looked pretty much the same until production ended in the very early 2000s, there was a ton of differences. Every part, practically in a Type 1, was massaged, changed, from the headlights to the rear suspension to the engine, to the interior. So even though this car may look like, for example, my 1971 Super Beetle at a glance, it's really completely different. There's not a lot of interchangeability between these early ones and some of the later ones. Yeah, the body panels changed a bunch, but they also changed a lot of the mechanical aspect of it. So something that you might notice is that these rear wheels are sitting at a little bit of an angle. And that's because of the swing arm design of this independent rear suspension, right, Tommy? Yeah, exactly, Case and very simple rear suspension design. Also, not something you maybe want to do some high-speed cornering with, because if that <laughs> rear wheel tucks on a slide, you could end up shiny side down. Now let's check out that engine. So from the beginning, it was always a flat four air-cooled unit, but this was an 1100 that made 25 <laughs> horsepower case. Yeah, which by today's standards, obviously, you know, next to nothing, but this car also weighs next to nothing. Exactly. Um, Case, why don't we do this here? I'll give you the camera. Let's go check out the inside. So another thing that really evolved over the decades was the interior design. I'll let you in. I'm locked out. There you go. So obviously some of this stuff is pretty noticeable to Volkswagen fans, like the flat pan, right? It's all very simple. You got that central tunnel here. It's a four-speed manual, you know, left-hand drive, basic steering wheel. This is your control for the Semi 4. Let's see if it pops out. Did it pop out? It does not. Okay, Semi 4s might be a little broken there, but <laughs> um, uh, dual glove boxes here, no radio. You do have your heater controls down here, just like some of the newer stuff, but that is it. There's a button on the floor for your high beams, a couple of knobs for your lights, yeah, doesn't get much more simple than that. And Tommy, these seats almost look like they're corduroy. Yeah, Case, really a basic <laughs> seat design, no seat belts, no headrests. This is not a car you want to get in a collision with. No, absolutely not. Uh, should we uh, take it around the block? Yeah, let's go for a little spin. The other thing that I think is funny, so these seats are, are scooted fairly far forward, but uh, one thing this car has in common with a 911, not a lot of uh, rear seat leg room. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that was the main focus when they were designing it. Okay, so a um, couple of interesting things about these early cars. There's no synchros. So, you know, rev matching is very important. It is a four speed with, of course, a reverse. That right there is your choke. And I think that's pretty much all there is to it. So we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can get it into gear without crunching it too much. Oh, this car purrs along beautifully. Yeah, and it helps too, obviously, that you have a Volkswagen Beetle. You've had a couple Volkswagen Beetles in the past, so you're familiar with driving them. I am a little familiar with driving them, exactly right. I do, I have had some experience. Pretty high clutch take up on this car. Yeah, and obviously but, we also want to be oh, very careful with it. Oh, your door's still open. We don't want to slam your door there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're just going to go take it around the block. Go that way? Okay. We're going the other way. I'll see if Tommy can find reverse. That's fourth. 
It's like stirring porridge, Case. Hey, at least it's easier than walking, right? <laughs> We'll ask, we'll ask Mark head of PR here. Mark, reverse is down and to the left, right? Push it, push it down. And that should be left. reverse? Yeah, that should be fine. Clutch takes it. Oh, you got it. We got oh, it. Oh, there we go. It just took a little help from the uh, head of PR. Head of Volkswagen. PR, yeah. That's not embarrassing at all. <laughs> They're like, uh, Tommy, you sure you can drive this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, I love uh, this obviously very simple but very cool retro speedometer. You wouldn't be able to tell I own two of them. Of course, I have the whole Volkswagen team here just like so upset. All right, we're gonna go, let's go around the block here. Yeah, a video speedometer gauge here is pretty cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah, look at that. And I think it's in kilometers an hour because there's no way you're doing 120. Oh, God, no. With 25 horsepower. <laughs> Actually, throttle response feels really, really good. Oh, nice shift, Tommy. Nice and responsive. In a second there. And it's funny that. It feels like that motor is in the car with us. Drum brakes, of course, manually assisted. Really good brakes. <laughs> yeah, the gear selector is pretty vague, Case is the word I would describe it. <laughs> yeah, uh, again, uh, it's, it's not quite a 911, uh, even if it was the basis for it. In a second, full throttle. Wow. You got the iconic thrum of the flat floor, flat four. Case, what I think is interesting is you don't actually um, get that little chirp though that like mine has. Yeah. And that's because it's all in the exhaust tip baffle. That's what makes that little chirp. Which is funny because that to me is a very iconic part of any Volkswagen Beetle. That, that noise that yours makes is what I'm used to. 100%. You know, the steering is really precise though. Super light steering, of course, full manual steering. I guess for the day's standards, not uh, well, not, not here, two days. I'll let you drive it in a sec here. I'd love to get your impression, but even by today's standard, it really doesn't feel really? bad. Yeah, not there's, bad. there's not a lot of slop in it. I'm surprised. The clutch take up is very high. Also pretty cool, this uh, a really beautifully shaped rear view mirror. And uh, that rear view mirror is all you get. There's... I mean, when you consider <laughs> that this was a car really developed in the 30s, put into production in the 40s, it, it, it still feels pretty modern to this day from a driving standpoint. How different does this drive than all the later model Beetles that you've been in? I've driven quite a few and um, honestly it feels exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I know there's really little in this compared to my uh, Super Beetle. Well yeah, because your Super Beetle even has obviously a different rear suspension design uh, but also a very different front suspension design. Yeah, too, right? McPherson struts but they feel super similar. Alright, I'll take the camera. I'll let you have your go. All right. No big deal just to get to to drive the car that was in the Super Bowl ad, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Case, let's see if there's anything. Oh, they locked the front. Oh, that's all right. I have to say, I apologize if I'm not having a good showing today on my Volkswagen knowledge. I'm very nervous driving one of Volkswagen's collection cars. Okay, so let's see just how just how vague. It's, it's oh, very, wow. It's, yeah. it's incredibly vague. It, it should be pretty, I, think I, I first, mean, it's, First is more like there. Oh, it's okay. It's kind of in the middle. And the clutch take up is all the way at the top. It is. It also feels strange getting in and and not buckling up a seatbelt, but <laughs> you know, there is nothing to buckle. Actually, you're right, the steering is pretty precise, which I'm surprised by, and super light. It's really good, huh? Yeah, just oh, you a, did good? You just did a good. little yeah, pretty good for a non-synchro <laughs> transmission. <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh, pretty special getting to drive Volkswagen's own Beetle. I, this is about as, as nice as a lot of these things get because these were pretty inexpensive cars back in the day and there is obviously a huge community around them, but a lot of them were, were used pretty hard and uh, not necessarily maintained well. So one this old is pretty uncommon to come by relative to later model Beetles, right? Well, are you impressed? I am impressed. This is way cool. It's really cool, yeah. So big thank you to Volkswagen for letting us take a spin in their 49. Absolutely. What'd they name it? Benny. Benny, yep. And uh, we'll see you in another episode.